Today I'm gonna to share with you two delicious and frequently requested meals that you can make for dinner, one of which is cooking right there. You are not gonna to wanna to miss it. So stay tuned and let's see what's for dinner. I've decided for dinner tonight, I'm gonna to make some meatloaf. My son had his wisdom teeth taken out a few days ago. So he still is trying to eat soft food, so I figured meatloaf is pretty soft. So it just requires ground beef. Um, this is hamburger patties, but if you'll see, it's 1.33 pounds. So it's a little bit more than a pound. Um, I'm using an egg, some Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, um, minced garlic, some panko breadcrumbs, and I'm putting a packet of onion soup mix in there. Now with this, we are having macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes. I'm making a little salad for my husband and I, but look, don't judge. But I'm cheating by buying the macaroni and cheese and the mashed potatoes and the gravy. So, you know what? Can I make macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes? Yes. Do I want to spend the time doing it? No. So this is what we got. So I will show you how I put the meatloaf together. All right, I have the ground beef in the uh, dish and I'm adding a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs, an egg, two teaspoons of minced garlic, a tablespoon of the Worcestershire sauce. Then I'm going to add the about a half a cup of ketchup, then salt and pepper, and finally the Lipton onion soup mix. All right, I am going to use this fork because I don't like touching raw meat. I'm gonna use the fork to mix it really well. And once I mix it up and everything is well blended, I put it in a casserole dish that I've sprayed with some oil. And the video stops before you can see me spread it out. But anyway, I do that and then I put it into a 350 degree oven and let it cook for about 30 minutes. While my meatloaf is cooking, I am going to put together a quote unquote salad. Um, it's not gonna have lettuce, it just has these three ingredients. Ken's uh, Steakhouse Light Balsamic Vinaigrette, a packet of cranberries and glazed walnuts, and a, I guess, medium-sized cucumber. And I'm gonna slice up the cucumber, add the cranberries and walnuts, and add some dressing, and that is it. I used to make this to put on lettuce, but we both, we were like, this is good enough without the lettuce, so let me show you how it's done. Literally, the video is so self-explanatory, but let me go ahead. I just cut the cucumber in half, I take out the inside and then I cut the cucumber um, halves into thirds and into slices so that they're little bite-sized pieces. Then I just literally add the bag of cranberries and walnut, walnuts and the dressing, however much dressing you want, mix it up and that is it. Now for the glaze that I put on top of the meatloaf, I just have a half a cup of ketchup and two tablespoons of brown sugar. I mix it up really well and then after about 30 minutes of cooking, I take the meatloaf out of the oven. I pour the sauce on top, to pour the glaze on top, spread it out evenly and put it back into the oven for about 10 more minutes. You wanna make sure the internal temperature of the meatloaf is 160 degrees. Thank you. 
Okay, everything is ready. And I have the macaroni and cheese, the mashed potatoes and gravy, and the salad on my plate. And so now I'm going to serve up the meatloaf. And it looks yummy. So we have meatloaf, mashed potatoes and gravy, macaroni and cheese, and a cucumber salad. And that is what's for dinner. Tonight for dinner, we are having chicken and sausage gumbo. So I'm gonna show you real quick the things that I put in there. Normally I make a roux from scratch, but because it's kind of late in the day, I'm gonna cheat and use this jar roux. So I have about a half a jar. I don't know if I'll use all that, but I've got chicken um, already shredded. It's a rotisserie chicken. I have some Cajun sausage, smoked sausage. I have this seasoning blend, which is a blend of onion, bell pepper, and celery and I don't have enough, so I'm going to use this onion and chop it, and I have this bell pepper that I chopped and froze a while back. I also put Tabasco in it while I cook. I put a little bit of Worcestershire, and for the seasonings, you see here, Cajun seasoning, oregano, thyme, garlic powder, onion powder, and also salt and pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop the onion and chop the sausage, and then I will get the gumbo started. So the roux, like I said, is this jarred roux and it calls for four quarts of water in here and four heaping tablespoons of the roux. So I'm gonna put that in there. Actually, let me get this to make it quicker and less noisy. So I'm gonna do four of these and what it calls for you to do is let this cook for about 30 minutes. So while this is cooking, I am going to bring the camera over to the other side of the stove so that you can see me cooking. I like to cook my sausage and vegetables before I put them in the pot. Um, I don't know, just because I like the the grease from the um, sausage. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna let this roux dissolve. You can see in here what it looks like. Kinda looks weird. So while it is starting to dissolve and gonna let it cook for 30 minutes, I'm going to saute my vegetables. The seasoning blend, the little bit of the onion that I chopped up and the bell pepper that was already chopped up in my freezer. All right, the roux has been cooking for about 30 minutes and it is now ready for me to start adding the rest of the ingredients. So the first thing I'm going to add to it is the sausage and vegetables. I'm just gonna add that to the pot. And I'm gonna add the chicken and the spices. And I will have in the description box the recipe so that you can know how much of the spices that I use, because I just kind of eyeball it, but I will 
put down in the description box the measurements for you or the ingredients whatever so anyway so as far as the Worcestershire and Tabasco I basically just kind of I don't put much probably not even a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and the Tabasco I just kind of give it two shakes like that now I did forget to mention earlier that I do like to add this kitchen bouquet and it's a browning and seasoning sauce and I have showed you in a couple of my other cooking videos this I love using this because I do like my gumbo a little bit dark and so I add maybe a teaspoon of this to the gumbo and I also forgot to mention the gumbo filet and that kind of just thickens it up a little bit but right now I'm gonna go ahead and add the seasonings This container of beef broth is probably bigger than what I would normally use, but this was the one I had in my pantry. So I may add like maybe half of this, and if I see that I need more liquid in my gumbo later, I will add some more. All right, here it is. The rotisserie chicken is already cooked, clearly, so it's just a matter of it cooking long enough to heat up, but I will probably let this cook for a couple of hours, and then I'm going to make some jasmine rice to go with it and some garlic bread. Goodness gracious, I would forget my head if it wasn't attached to my shoulders. Anyway, I forgot to mention that I also add in a bay leaf, and I'll let that cook in there. So, yeah, it's starting to boil, and I'm going to turn it down on low, like a very low simmer, and like I said, I'm going to let it cook for a couple of hours, let all those wonderful seasonings marry and I will see you in a couple hours. All right, the gumbo is ready. And it smells so good. So I have my jasmine rice already in the bowl. I have my garlic bread. So now I'm just going to serve it up. Oops. And that, my friends, is what's for dinner. All right, you guys, seriously, I'm not lying to you when I said these are highly requested. Sometimes when I'm asking what my family wants for dinner, I have to preface it by saying not gumbo. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the videos and I hope that one of these meals is something that you feel like you wanna make for your family. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you have made either one of these. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for coming by. I love to do cooking videos home decor videos, DIYs, home organization, all kinds of stuff. So if you like that kind of thing, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the like button because it does let YouTube know that you are watching. And don't forget to leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.